The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hey, Cleaning Nation, Mike Campion here with the lovely and amazing Suzanne Bandick. As usual, um, she gets all the credit for today's topic. She suggested it. I said, that's genius. We should do that. So here we are. Um, one of the, I'm just going to call it a skill because I do believe, I shouldn't say believe, I've experienced it can be built over time. One of the I dare say most important, least talked about skills for entrepreneurship, not just owners of a cleaning company, but any entrepreneurship endeavor is the skill of decision making. And there's really two parts to it. And I'm Suzanne is going to kind of have the meat of the content. I'm just going to set the foundations I see fit and then let her fill in blanks with all the, the wisdom. There's the ability to do it at all, which I think people underestimate tremendously. Um, the research overwhelmingly shows successful people make more decisions. They make them faster. They're slower to go back on them. If they make a decision they don't like, they look to solve that decision by making another decision. Unsuccessful people, I got to think about it. I'm not sure. I've got to whatever. And again, I've said I've got to think about it. And I've never like blocked off on my thing 30 minutes to think about it and write stuff out. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'm not, you know, advocating people should think less. I'm advocating by the time someone says, I've got to think about it, they've already thought about it and they already know what they need. They're just afraid. What they're really saying is I'm afraid to do something different um, or to be put a finer point on it, I'm more afraid to do something different than I am afraid to keep things the way they are. So there's the ability to make a decision, which is underrated and wildly important. And there's the ability to make a good decision or the right decision which is wildly important, but not uh, underrated. I think everybody gets that one. <laughs> Don't emphasize enough the, even if you got the best decision in the world until you pull the trigger and do something, it is nothing but potential. So just as a coach, it's my frustration to see, even when people pay us a lot of money to tell them exactly what to do, they still don't decide, you know? So it's, it's, and it's heartbreaking to see people that are right there in their decision-making process fails them. Cause it's not that they don't make decisions. They make passive decisions. Well, I'm going to wait. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to, that's a decision. So anyway, there we go. That's my, I will step down off the uh, the pulpit and let Suzanne give some actual coaching. But I just wanted to say this, it's such a big deal. Go ahead, Suzanne. It, it was a great intro, Mike. I was biting my tongue because I also wanted to add in. I didn't want to interrupt, but I wanted to add in. We're always so afraid of what if I make the wrong decision? Mm. Right? That plays such a large part in in the waffling of how do we make a decision why do we do it and to answer the another part that you mentioned if we don't make the decision something is going to happen that will cause a decision to be made and it may not be what we like i would go so far as say saying i'm not going to make a decision is making a decision it is the decision to continue on the path that you're on and which is fine. I'm okay with people making that decision, owning that decision. So raise prices, hire a coach, fire this employee, buy this piece of equipment, sell a car, whatever, pick a decision. doesn't really matter. I've got to think about that. You've just, so let's say it's, I've co you've got, you're one of my clients and you've got a bunch of company vehicles. We've encouraged you to sell them. Well, I don't know. I've I'm heard just, that before. Yeah, um, yeah. Most of these examples I give are actual examples. We just leave out the names to protect the guilty. So I'm going to think about that. Is really saying I'm going to. I've decided I'm going to hold on to that car for the indefinite future, which is fine. I'm okay with you making that decision. But people were like, "Oh, I don't want to make that decision. It's a bad decision." It's like, of course it is. So wouldn't the good decision be to sell the car, <laughs> but you're like, I'm going to do nothing. Then that's a decision to keep the car. Like every day you don't sell something is a day. Right. So I get some, you get some coaching. I'm going to think about it. Okay. So you've decided 
you haven't decided, you haven't put the decision off. You made a decision right now to continue going forward without any coaching. And maybe that's the right decision, but don't lie to yourself and go, I'm not going to make a decision. I'm going to decide later. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to put it over. I'm going to put it off. None of those are true. The truth is I am going to continue without any coaching right now, which God bless you. If you're like, that's what I want. Okay. That's a decision, but just be honest with yourself. Don't tell yourself you've made a decision by putting off a decision or you put off a decision. You haven't, you've made a decision. Sorry, I, I just, I get so, because that's all we coach people to do. It's just, they used to make decisions this way and you got that result. We need you to make decisions this way and you'll get this result. That's like our whole freaking thing. Right. It, okay. So let's. <laughs> Suzanne's like, okay, just slow down, Mike. You're freaking that one out, man. <laughs> and she's right is the worst part. So let's talk about two factors that I would encourage everyone to consider so that you can make a decision more effectively, more efficiently, and faster in general, okay? Two things. One, we talk a lot about core values. We do with our clients, and I know you've talked about core values on podcasts. We should live and be creating our lives and our businesses based on these core values. So number one, look at your core values and what's most important to you. And number two, ask this question. What is the best decision for my business? I have thoughts, but go ahead. Okay. I want to add in on this. We attract and work with a lot of people who are very, very nice. They are nice people who are concerned about hurting people's feelings, about not doing the right thing, about always always trying to protect the other person. However, scenarios come up and I would like to give specific ones because I know from our clients they deal with them and I know our listeners are dealing with them. Situations like an employee is not working out and yet there's waffling on should I fire that employee or when you're doing a hiring interview and you're waffling on, should I hire this employee? Or when you have a client who really is not a good core value match, not treating you or your cleaners well, and you're concerned, should I let them go? What happens when we don't make a decision is it, it weighs on us. It takes up our headspace. We are not productive in all the other areas of our life and our business because we're inundated with this stress of should I, shouldn't I? Should I, shouldn't I? But if you can come back to core values and what is the best decision for my business, I guarantee you don't have to worry about being nice because you are inherently nice. You will hire or fire or decline in a very nice way, but you have to make the decision. So two things on that, because those that was just such a spot on perspective and, and articulation or communication of that. Thing one, having done this for myself and for others and observed others for decades now, I have found overwhelmingly if not 100%, but overwhelmingly, when you think, I probably shouldn't hire that person, I probably should fire that person, you really know the right thing already. So it's not about deciding whether you should hire them or fire them. If we're going to, if I can, if I can thin slice it, just really put a fine point on it. We think what we tell ourselves to make it easier is I need to think about the decision of if I should, if they're a good fit or not, or if I should hire or fire them. When we're asking that question, we know we should already fire them. The decision we're making is, will we do the hard thing that we know we're supposed to do? And we don't really present it to ourselves that way because it makes us feel weak and like, oh, we know. But that's the truth of it. Mo you know, Nine times out of eight, when I'm like, I don't know if I should fire hire this person. I already know I shouldn't. I'm just saying, should I follow through on what I already know to be true? If I think, should I fire this person? I know I should fire this person. To finish Suzanne's point, which I love about being nice, and this is Suzanne's territory, so I'll bungle it and let her fix it. Um, 
yes, you're putting a tremendous amount of undue stress on yourself that you're going to carry into other areas of your life. If you make that mean, I'm not saying this means that, but if you mean what happens is oftentimes some of the quote unquote nice people Suzanne's referring to is if I fire this person who's not a fit, that means I'm being mean to them. I've done something mean or I'm a mean person or some combination. It could also mean if I let this person stay and do a bad job in a place that they're not contributing, that's a really mean thing to do to someone, to their new employer who needs them, who, to themselves that could be happy and to the other people around them. So just because, don't don't take at face value your initial definition of nice, because often what it means is that's easy. And I use my identity as a nice person to do the easy thing. Whereas sometimes the nice thing or the kind thing or the truly caring thing is not the easy thing. And maybe it doesn't feel great in the moment, but you kind of got to decide, do I want this person to like me now or respect and love me forever? So I, we kind of got real deep real quick, but I would love your perspective, Suzanne. Well, that is really deep. And I'm going to add into that by saying, yes, we know the decision we need to make. It's inherent. The waffling and the, the choosing not to make it is the part that causes us stress. So I would, I would recommend that everybody write down the question, what is the best decision for my business? And it takes a lot of the, as Mike would say, the drama out of this. Okay? We're, we stop second guessing ourselves. Let's do specifics here. If you have an employee that is not the right fit for your company, they are going to be a problem for all of the people that they work with, your other employee, your other cleaners. They are probably going to cause a problem with your clients. They are probably not happy with what they are doing. If you were to say, my best decision for my company is to let this person go, and you even want to measure it against, am I being nice or not? And Mike, you touched on this. How about the niceness is you're allowing them to find another job that they would love and excel at? Because if you're having a problem with them, they're not happy. So by doing this, you're allowing them to be happy. Hello, we even we even hit the, the nice tick mark. Hey, amazing people. You may have noticed we don't sell a dadgum thing on this podcast. We don't allow ads. The only ask I can ever have of you guys is if you dig the show, for you to spread the word and share so we can change as many lives as possible. Literally, it'll take you five seconds to give us a great review, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate you as a listener and value the gift of your kind words. Now, back to the show. Let's make it harder. Say, and this isn't going to happen, but I'm just playing along in our thing. Say you fire them. And by the way, just a little bit of bonus here. One or two things are going to happen. One, they're going to go, man, I'm really appreciative of the, the the opportunity I had and, you know, thank you and, you know, best of luck and you know, maybe we can keep in touch and that's a good outcome. Two, they're going to give you the finger, light something on fire, start cursing and walk out. And that should make you go, well, that was a good decision. <laughs> Either way, decision, decision affirm. But let's make up some fairy tale land that this won't happen, but you can apply this to other decisions where it might, where you let them go. And they say something and you're like, oh no, I've made a terrible decision, right? I should have, they say some magic word or thing that you're like, oh, now I, now all, all the decision-making thoughts that I went through that was best for my business are all turned on their head and made a terrible decision. Hey, and this circumstance is not going to happen. I've seen hundreds of partying of friends and it never happens. Just trust me on this. But let's say it does. You can just make another decision to, to fix it. Or Absolutely. you can just go, well, that now seems like a bad decision, but we'll see. Time will still tell. That thing that you think turned everything on its ears, maybe in a week or a month, it won't look that way. But what we do is we keep a hundred people. And again, not exactly a hundred people, but we don't, we put off this decision a hundred times, guaranteeing ourselves death by a thousand cuts to avoid yes. the one thing where, oh, I maybe I did it wrong. I did hire a coach and he or she was a scam. I did fire this guy and it turned out he was the king of the world and that was stupid. And, 
A, that almost never happens. And B, you get the guaranteed loss times 100 to protect this potential win times a one that never comes around. And Mike, I was just going to say that that doesn't happen. That's in our mind. Okay. I would like to share with everyone a very, an example. I just worked with a client. Okay. I just talked to her. She let somebody go. She hired two new employees and one wasn't going to work out. It was obvious. She figured that out on day two. She decided to let them go. That night, remember I tell you we attract the nicest people? That night she was feeling just awful. She was feeling all this tension, like, did I make the right decision? So now she's done it. She made the decision. Now she's she's questioning her decision rather than mm-hmm. just going with it. She said, well, I'm just going to sleep on this. What happened the very next morning? This this employee that she let go sent her a really nasty message. Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh, man, and I lost, I lost sleep. I was stressed over this. And look, I was right. Yeah, there's there's two ways we can go. I'm going to say one quick thing. and I want to get back to decision making because, you know, we've got limited time just on the employee thing. Then I want to kind of make it more generic Mm -hmm. to decision making or more global to decision making. I love our people and a lot of you listeners are people, of course, who just have this massive ownership for their team. And that's great. Like that, I care about Suzanne and I couldn't just be like, get the heck out of here, knowing this job means something to her and she's been so kind and and such a contributor and feel nothing about it. But two things can be true at one time, right? One can be this person that you're agonizing over does need money. Maybe not, maybe so. Two, they have done a good job in the past. Maybe not, maybe so. Maybe they've been bad from the start. I'm trying to make it as hard as possible. But the reality is if they're not doing well now, like Suzanne said, they need to be somewhere else for their own benefit. And we have this belief that I think is wildly unfounded that it's just, it's a complete double standard. In cleaning, we feel like we owe these people a job forever. Like it is our responsibility to get a certain amount of hours and employ them come hell or high water. And the reality is they'll leave tomorrow with no notice and just turn their backs on us. And it's one thing if I have a covenant relationship with my wife and we've agreed ride or die, baby, it's you and me, that relationship is appropriate to go. I don't just torture because you know, that relationship, because she displeased me in some way, because that's the nature of that relationship. It's meant to be a lifetime relationship. I don't have that. I love Suzanne. She's amazing. I consider her a friend, maybe even a close friend. I, I hold her in the highest regard, but we don't have that ride or die relationship. And here's the beautiful thing. I think Suzanne, I know Suzanne brings a tremendous amount of value here. And I think she gets a lot of value. But as much as I love her and I think she loves us, she's got a ton to offer the world. And if she went somewhere else, she'd crush it for them and be happy. And we've got a ton to offer and we could never replace Suzanne because she's unique, but we get someone else that would also do a great job. So we kind of put all this, it would be unreasonable for me to put pressure on Suzanne that if you leave, I can never replace you because now she's a nice person. She's going to feel guilt. And that's crazy because it's not the truth. And it would be unreasonable for Suzanne to put pressure on me. If you don't feed my family, Mike, I'm going to die and starve. That's not the truth. She's a wildly talented human. So we kind of warped this healthy relationship of, I love you being on our team and you're such a contributor. And she's like, I love being on the team. And and it gives a lot to me. Healthy, 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 healthy. We it's mutual. We just love it and warp it into this weird. She depends on me and I owe her this or vice versa. I depend on her and I owe this. And it just sucks the life and the joy right out of it. We got to just be in this, like, I'm here because I want to be. And if Suzanne, this isn't her, but say she did leave and no one else is dumb enough to give her a job because she's completely talentless and she goes homeless. I can't own that, right? She's right. not my child or my my spouse. She's a good person who I love, but at some at some point it's her responsibility to build some daggum skills, not mine to make sure she eats no matter what happens. Go ahead, Suzanne. Now I can't even remember what I was going to say. <laughs> Dang it, I talked too long and screwed up Suzanne's <laughs> wise thought. It's 90% of the podcast is me talking and Suzanne losing genius thoughts. Okay, let me wrap it uh, with decision-making and then you can uh, actually, let me give my final thoughts on uh, decision-making and then you can kind of uh, wrap it any way that we see fit. The big thing, guys, gals, is we, oh, here, I'll, let's let's get political and have really piss off some people. Um, Uh-oh. 
I know I try not to. Well, again, I'm not going to take a side, but I just it's a it's a hot topic, right? COVID comes along and people are absolutely dying, super dangerous, and everybody counted that cost, right? That was a big cost and, and terrible for our whole community. Um, and we shut stuff down. I'm not saying that was good or bad. I'm just saying it's a thing that happened in the past. Um, there were some other consequences that happened. Um, you know, gosh, terrible things like child abuse went up and suicide and depression and pain, just really bad things. And I'm not smart enough to say, to do the, the, the weights, right, of which was worse. My frustration comes is nobody counted the other weight. Nobody that we just assumed, like we just looked at the deaths and the sickness, which is bad. That's a real thing that exists in the world. But there's this other bad that nobody really, I shouldn't say nobody, but it wasn't publicized. Like there's other stuff going on. And can we at least have a conversation? Maybe you, I think one way and you think another, and that's okay. But can we at least talk about it? So the same thing goes with decision-making, right? We go, I see, we, we look at one side. If I fire this person, get coaching, spend money, buy a thing, sell a thing, <laughs> whatever, start this relationship, end this relationship, whatever that looks like. We count the cost of the doing the thing, right? If I sell a car, I won't have that car. Maybe if I fire this person, I won't have that person. If I get a coach, it'll cost money. If I, whatever the case is, we count one side of the equation, but we don't look at the, if I don't sell this car, I'm going to have to keep paying for the dag and whatever. If I don't fire this person and we, we kind of COVID it, right? Where we highlight one side of the equation and we don't highlight the other. And if we highlighted them both, you could go, well, maybe locking down in this circumstance was the right thing and maybe it wasn't. But I made a, a well-educated decision. And guess what? If we lock down too hard, we can unlock. And if we don't lock down hard enough, we can lock down harder. Like we can always make another decision. But the, the takeaway on the, de the decision-making is you can't steer a parked car, right? So on COVID, say we did nothing. Nothing at all. Well, that's the wrong decision because we are too afraid if we lock down, that'll be bad. If we don't lock down, it'll be bad. And if we don't get a, a vaccine, that'll be bad. And if we get one, you know, we could have done nothing. And that's for sure the wrong answer. But if we kind of try stuff, and now that we're, you know, we're recording this end of 2023, we've got some rear view mirror and we can see some stuff that's like, all right, now it's a little clear because we made a bunch of decisions, some good, some bad. We can all argue about which were which, but because we took action, we can, we got, we got data. So same in your business, which is not life or death like COVID was take some actions. You can't steer a parked car. I know you can't crash one, but the goal isn't to not crash is to build a daggum business. So give yourself permission to make some decisions and just go, I'm going to get data no matter what. Right. And, and maybe not even judge the outcome. Like I wanted, I made this decision hoping for this result and I got a different result and that, that can mean whatever I need it to mean. So just take the pressure off the decision-making and do something in nine times out of 10 circumstances, doing nothing is the wrong decision. And and you're like, well, there's a 50-50 say I make a right decision or wrong decision. 90% of the time, 100% of the time you make the right decision, that's a win. Half the time you make the wrong decision, it's still a win because you learn something. Okay. And it maybe it takes two or three wrong decisions to get the right decision. And there's some pain and suffering associated with those wrong decisions. But that pain and suffering was far less than the pain and suffering of making no decisions and guaranteeing you get the result that you keep getting. All right. Second sermon over. Suzanne, wrap this bad boy any way you see fit. <laughs> Be okay. political. Say what you want to say. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Bottom line is not making a decision causes us stress. And it actually makes us weaker in our lives and in our business. So recommendation. If you have a decision that you need to make, make it. Mm. Decide to make it. We take... The, the information, we take the best possible scenario up from the facts that we have right now. You make the best decision you can make based on the facts that you have right now using, remember the question, what's the best decision for my business? Please remember that. Make the best decision you can. Make it. It will lessen your stress. It will strengthen your power. And if you decide you need to change it down the road, you know you can remake a new decision. Always. But always, always make the decision so that you are not feeling that stress. Boom. I'm going to end, cap that off nicely with a quote. I wish I could give credit. I don't remember who said it. Read it in Tim Ferriss's book, but he was quoting someone else. The quality of your life is determined by the number of difficult conversations you're willing to have. Um, I think you could very nearly replace the quality of your life. The quality of your business is very nearly dictated by the number of difficult decisions that you make. And I should really, I would even take decisions out and put in actions because 
we're always making decisions, right? So we can't decide to decide later. That's a decision. We can put off action. And that's where the stress that Suzanne is talking about comes from, because we know in our heart, we've already made the decision of what the right thing to do is, but we haven't done it. So I don't know about you guys, but for me, say I, I always pick on Suzanne because she's here. She and I have a fight and I'm like, you're a terrible dummy. And she says she's Canadian. So she apologizes, but we get off the phone and I realize, boy, was I wrong? It just was. And maybe that conversation of eating crow and going to Suzanne and going, I was so wrong. Please forgive me. Maybe I'm not looking forward to that. Probably not. <laughs> Even still, the time between when I know that I was wrong and need to make it right and I call her is just freaking brutal. It's, just, it's not probably Suzanne doesn't feel great. She's not loving it. And I know it's not good for me. So it's not just making a decision. It's taking action. When you know what the thing is, that pain and the stress that Suzanne's talking about is the lack of action. I know I made a fool of myself in front of Suzanne and I got to call and apologize, but I don't want it because I'm proud. That's you know, I'm taking poison, hoping it's going to make Suzanne sick for crying out loud. So take action, realize the quality of your life, quality of your business is really the level of difficult conversations, decisions, actions you're willing to take. And uh, trust me, if I feel bad now about needing to say bad to apologize to Suzanne, and I say it six minutes after the conversation, it's much better if I wait a month. In a month, the relationship might be over, might be done. So you're going to you're gonna have to take the action. It's going to come either way. You just want to pay it now or you want to pay it later with interest, but you're going to pay. All right. And Clean that's it. a beautiful bow. Take the action. Thank you, Mike. Run it. All right, guys. Uh, if you need anything else, growmycleaningcompany.com. Uh, tons and tons of free content. Join us on our Facebook group. If you need help, reach out, let us know. Um, love you guys. See you soon. Well, here we are, the end of the podcast, and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me, but like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing, share it with a friend, share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me in the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431, 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.